All right. <clears throat> Hello. Um, today, I want to talk to you about um, two of the four ranks in heaven. Uh, when I looked up the four ranks, I didn't get four ranks. I got nine ranks. So I believe that they're putting them in categories of three. But before I go into my program, I wanted to address the issue of R. Kelly. Um, I know a lot of people looking bad on first, first off, it's part of uh the game. Uh it's part of the stage of life. Their life is uh, just a stage and most of what's going on right now is just part of a program, a deceptive plan for mankind. But on a more personal level about R. Kelly is I, I feel as though he's just as much a victim. I need to turn the volume down on my phone because I can see where that's going to be a distraction today because I'm not supposed to get this message out. So this is what we're going to do. Just one of them old people the Lord's got to hold on. <laughs> Sang it and made my own ringtone. Going to just put that on silence. <clears throat> but I feel like R. Kelly is a victim himself. And to me, I mean, Aaliyah may have been a lot younger than R. Kelly. And I don't have cold facts on it. I haven't seen it in my in the Bible for myself, but I have heard that Mary was 15 when she got pregnant with the baby Jesus. And I also understand that uh, Joseph had some years on Mary. Uh, but that was all in God's great plan. It was pure and beautiful. Um, the things that go on in the world now are defiled and um, pedophilic and disgusting. Nobody's marrying anybody. But R. Kelly, he married Aaliyah. Even though he had some years on Aaliyah, he still married Aaliyah. He loved Aaliyah. R. Kelly ain't been right since Aaliyah got killed. He is lost. It's like he lost his rib in the game, baby. He didn't know what demonicness he was into until they took his rib. They took his rib. That's when you start seeing all of these videos with him with younger girls. And that's when all of that came out, when he lost his rib. So R. Kelly is in my prayers, deep in my prayers. And I can't see people uh, trying to judge a situation when they're not lining up with judgment themselves. So be careful about judgment is the way I look at it. You see what I'm saying? Because if you a judge, then you lining up with judgment and you in meekness and humbleness in all of your decisions, you're not coming at nobody like that. You you walking with them. You praying for them. You trying to bring them out, baby. You not, you not, it's not all of this what's going on with R. Kelly right now. Uh, um, uh, Paul told the Corinthians, I dare you to take an issue to the law before taking it to the saints. So uh, people that are in God's kingdom know not to indulge in this law, but to take their issues to the saints, to the courtrooms of heaven. You don't belong in this world no more. See, there's a lot of people in this world. That's how come a lot of people got something to say about this bull in my opinion but i'm off that subject and i'm gonna get on with my program and uh we're gonna work on angelic pathways because we trying to get into the kingdom of heaven all right so i'm gonna just start off with my boy trotman that's roger trotman's son you remember the dun, 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 dun. 
Had it through the grapevine. Well, his son, his son makes the most beautiful songs with that same instrument for the Lord. So enjoy. We're gonna skip this commercial. This right here is your stop. catching that before it jumped into that commercial all right so now 
Uh, that was Roger Trotman, and it's I'm taking authority. <laughs> taking authority. We have to take authority. We have to take authority. And we get that authority from our true creator, God. Um, also, I wanted to mention, just going back to R. Kelly, I'm a Chicago girl, and uh, I grew up on stepping, and I, I I love R. Kelly, you know, and everything he said he did it, he did it for love. Now, I don't know if he perverted that. I don't know if he was saying he loved Satan or what kind of love was going on right there, but uh, it was a real good feeling when you stepped in the name of love. Hey, I'm just keeping it real. You feel me? We are God's children at the end of the day. So let me get started. Now, the first rank, because uh, they grouped it in threes, threes, um, the first rank, um, I'm believing to belong to the true creator, but uh, I always start at second Enoch because uh, second Enoch is where I got these four ranks from. And Enoch is mentioned in Genesis 5, 21 through 24. Enoch went up. Enoch did not die. Enoch went up. He stayed with the Lord for a while up there. He came down. He delivered some of that stuff he got while he was up there with the Lord. And then Enoch went up again. Okay. Enoch did not die. So, and I um I got this information, this arousal or peak of my curiosity from chapter 18, the fifth heaven, verse seven. Okay, so I'm just gonna start right there on verse seven from the uh, reluctant messenger. Chapters 1 through 69, the second book of Enoch. And they listened to his abomination. And if I told you in other videos that abomination means something that they detested, they just didn't like the idea. And they listened to my abomination and spoke to the four ranks in heaven. And lo, as I stood with these two men, he stood with two angels. <laughs> Four trumpets trumpeted. These are the cherubims uh, that would change up to the fifth heaven um, because you know what they did. They were the ones who originally carried God's throne. And trumpeted together with great voice. They got loud. They, they, they made a joyful noise to the Lord. And the Gregory, Gregory, I call him, broke into song with one voice and you know satan had pipes in him he could sing he can sing and their voice went up before the lord pitifully and affectingly but that's where i started wondering what what are four ranks what are the four ranks like really <clears throat> So, like I say, I believe the first rank is God himself, okay? And then they break the other three ranks into groups of three, which is the seraphim, the cherubim, and thrones, okay? And then you have dominion, virtues, and powers, So that's the second rank. And then the fourth, uh, uh, well, wait, no, that would have been the third rank. The first rank is God himself. Second rank is seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. Uh, 
third rank is dominions, virtues, and the powers. And I'm just going to plead the blood of Jesus right now. And the fourth rank would be principalities, archangels, and angels. Okay. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. God protect the minds and the ears of those listeners that do watch this video, their lives, their children's lives. Because um, one thing that these spirits don't want you to do is they don't want you to get this. They don't want me to bring this message. If you could, if I could just tell y'all some of the hell I catch in my life. It'll bring y'all to tears. But we not going to cry because it's going to come a day when we all speak of our joyful and, 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 and no more tears and no more crying and no more heartache and no more pain. And the day is coming and the day is coming soon. So I'm just going to get ready for that. And I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I ain't finna hit Mary, I ain't finna hit Mary J up in here, but I won't give the devil joy of tears. He likes that. So I just gave my version of the first rank, the God that we all know and love, the true creator. So now something in my spirit tells me that first rank in heaven is the creator of all. Seen and unseen, just and unjust. Our majesty. I am. He just is. Do you understand that? Nobody created him. He just was. He just is. No, no one made him. He just exists. I can't wait to get to heaven just so... I pray he tells us that story. How did you come about being, Father? I am the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, righteous and true in all his judgments. Never a broken promise, never a lying word. Love at its purest, Jehovah Lord God is first rank. And then I'm going to read to you second rank, which is seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. The God-loving six-winged seraphim stand closer than all before their creator and maker. As the prophet Isaiah saw, saying, They are fire-like since they stand before the one of whom it is written. Standing before such glory, the seraphim are fire-like as it is said. They are aflame with love for God and kindle others to such love. As I shown by their very name, for seraphim in the Hebrew language means flaming. We get to learn a little Hebrew here. After the seraphim, before the knowing God who resides in accessible light. I mean, a light that we couldn't even bear. Stand the many-eyed cherubim 
ineff in in ineffable radiance more than the other lower orders of angels they are always radiant with light of the knowledge of god with the knowledge of the mysteries of god and the depths of his wisdom being themselves enlightened they enlighten others their name cherubim is in translation from the hebrew language means great understanding or infusion of wisdom because thought because throughout the cherubim's wisdom is sent down to others and enlightenment of the spiritual eyes is given for the seeing of God and knowledge of God Now, Sherebrum, now, uh, I don't know if it's more than one or two, because this sounds like a combination of Seraphims and Sherebrum's, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if it's just two, because I know it's only the original four that held the throne, and they was the higher order of the angels, so. And the cherubims was the ones that we know that ripped through the veil on Mount Hermon and Satan fell to the earth. So that's three, three ripped through the veil on Mount Hermon and one Satan fell to the earth. So <clears throat> the Lord of Revelation, he'll, he'll reveal it to me. He'll give me revelation on it. Thereafter stood the God-bearing thrones. I found this amazing. <laughs> because these thrones have a lot to do with judgment. I already kind of went into thrones already. Before him who sits on the high and exalted throne, being named thrones, sits on them, as on intellectual thrones god intellectually resides and this is this is being explained in english and uh with man's intellect so it's probably a lot more powerful than that even we don't have the words to describe god intellectually resides they are not called God bearing according to essence, but according to grace and according to their office. As the flesh of Jesus Christ is called God bearing according to essence, since it was indivisibly united with God, the word himself. The thrones are then called God-bearing, not according to essence, but according to grace, given for their service, which is mystically and incomprehensibly to bear God in themselves residing on them in an incomprehensible manner. God makes his righteous judgment according to the word of David. And David says, thou hast set upon a throne, O thou that judges righteousness. See, only God can judge righteousness. God judges his righteous children, which 
ain't none of us righteous. <laughs> but if you're trying to be righteous, he'll give you judgment and he'll straighten you up. And whatever is crooked in you, he'll straighten it and make it right. Only God can judge me. I ain't finna go pock today. I ain't finna go pock either. Therefore, through them, the justice of God is preeminently manifest. <laughs> That's those that have Jesus in them. They serve his justice, glorifying it, and pour out the power of justice onto the thrones. They pour in this power, God's spirit, power. I got a friend, Sister Tina. That's her thing. Power! She knows about the power of the Lord. Glorifying it and pour out the power of justice onto the thrones of earthly judges. See, I was wondering, did we get these thrones in heaven? But we get these thrones here on earth. We may get them in heaven too. See, but judgment, judgment is going on right here right now people need to take their positions take your heavenly position here on earth i told you this the one i get excited about these thrones <laughs> i get excited about some other ones too but this thrones is just really just blows my mind and i'm just gonna start over again because i lost my place <laughs> So now, glorifying it and pour out the power of justice onto the thrones of earthly judges, helping kings and masters to bring forth right judgment. Kings and masters. Masters are people who have learned how to overcome evil. You are master. Just like in the karate kick. Yes, I'm master. 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 Hey. Helping kings and masters to bring forth right judgment. You see, we royalty. We are kings and queens. Once you enter into this kingdom of heaven which you do right here on earth, you become royalty. Take your positions, people. Don't be shame of him, because he'll be shame of you. I spend a lot of time alone because people say, oh, you strange. Oh, you weird. What? You don't celebrate birthdays? What? You don't do Christmas? Which people can kind of understand Halloween, but they still like to put on their little costumes and pass out their candy and do their little thizzle. I mean, you know. But, um, I mean, like, no. No. I'm going to steam my day. And, 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 and the Lord, he, he gets very little to any acknowledgement. He's the creator of all of this. You know what I'm saying? How I'm going to esteem myself when he created this world. And we do a lot of things in vanity. And it's the way of the world. It's traditions of men. And we think that it's right. And that's how come people need to read to show themselves approved. Because then they know that they're doing something wrong. They know then that... Uh, Something ain't right. And I like this other song by Rufus. His name is Rufus Trotman. Did I call him Roger Trotman? His daddy name is Roger Trotman. And he was into secular music. And his son, his name is Rufus Trotman. 
and I'm just going to play uh, his song, No Compromise. I don't know if I played this one before. I think I have. But I like it because it's talking about not compromising your position with the Lord. And uh, nothing <laughs> is worth compromising your position with the Lord. How are you going to take me back up here? Oh, wow. See what I'm saying? This is what I'm talking about. This little, little fluky stuff that goes on when you're trying to bring a message across. Really? <laughs> you think I'm kidding. Don't compromise. No compromise. That's right. No compromise. Get under my feet. Get behind me. Huh. Play my song. I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What's going on here? Do you see this? We'll just play the song. Oh my goodness, I am not even believing this. I'll take this from the top. Sorry about that. I'm telling you. <laughs> These devils ain't playing, honey. They ain't playing. We the only thing playing around here. They mean business. Get out anyway, baby. Woo. We got one situation and then another. <laughs> really? Don't want me to play this song. Because it's real business there, baby. No compromise. Uh-uh. I ain't coming up out for nothing. I ain't giving up on nothing for my heavenly father, baby. Hey, I'm getting home. I'm getting into the kingdom of heaven. Hey, ain't nothing you can offer me on this earth. These men ain't no good. The 
food getting so it's nasty. These cars break down on y'all. Don't care how good your young, your model. But just be quiet. Hey, don't compromise, baby. It'll be all over real soon. <laughs> 